Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jay and this is going to be a Jax guide or basically anything that is theory craft or uh, preparation related for Jax in top lane or jungle, which is where he's played right now. I personally, you should know before we begin that I play him in the jungle only, uh, just because I don't play top lane right now, but about one third of Jack's games statistically is jungling and the other two thirds are top lane. So there you go. I will be going through uh, everything, runes and items, and I will be marking the differences between top and jungle. Luckily there's not that much because Jax is uh, quite the simple champion at the moment. So let's just dive into the runes. We'll start off with the keystone. Conqueror is pretty much the only true viable option in my opinion. I've seen some people do Hail of Blades on Jungle Jax specifically. Personally, I don't think it's very strong. I don't think there's a real reason to run Hail of Blades. Jax wants to stay alive and deal damage for as long as possible, and Conqueror is just perfect for that. So Conqueror is by far the most popular rune, both for jungle and top lane. Uh, Keystone, I should say. And uh, there's really, really good reason for that. As for this row, there's no real reason to run Overheal or Presence of Mind, so everybody just picks Triumph, which is what you should be doing. Here, the choice is between Alacrity and Tenacity, and if you're top laning, you can also consider Bloodline. Personally, I like to just run Alacrity because it gives you the most DPS possible, and the thing is, I usually buy Merc Treads for my boots on Jax, which gives me the tenacity that I need. So I don't really need to run Legend Tenacity, and I also don't feel like I really need the sustain out of Bloodline, because I'm running Ravenous Hunter anyway. So Alacrity gives me the, the best clear speed in the jungle that I can get, and because of the way Jax works as a champion, he is an auto-attacker, he does have, you know, the empowered auto-attack on, on his, his ultimate passive, so I, th I think Alacrity is the best choice for me, because of my build and how the rest of my rune page works. If you like to build stuff like Ninja Tabby a lot, uh, which is the other option for your boots, then you can consider Legend Tenacity. It is, it is an extremely strong option, both for top lane and jungle. Uh, so there's that. And if you're not running Ravenous Hunter, which you might not, because there is another option, which I will be going over, then you can also consider Bloodline for sustain in the top lane. Most people pick uh, Alacrity or Tenacity. It's almost 50-50 in pick rate between those two. Extremely rarely will you ever see Bloodline on Jax, but it's actually not bad. It is worth considering, particularly in difficult matchups in top lane, I think, is where that becomes more attractive. Down here, it's between... really, it's between Coup de Gras and Last Stand. Uh, Last Stand was buffed. I've seen some people running Last Stand. Uh, but I haven't tried it out myself. Coup de Gras is what most people pick. It has by far the largest uh, pick rate, but Coup de Gras is more of a... It's, it's an execution kind of damage, whereas Last Stand is when you get low on health yourself. Which can admittedly be ridiculously helpful and awesome on Jax, because Jax is not the kind of champion that just blows up and dies instantly. He's the kind of champion that can actually get fairly low and stay there for a while without dying, especially because of his Counter-Strike. But also, you know, just because of his base stats and what the items you'll be building and the resists on his ultimate active, so there's a bunch of factors that make Last Stand a very attractive option for Jax. So I think it's worth experimenting with, I think it's worth trying out, and in clutch situations, you know, close 1v1s with other junglers or just you know, messy 2v2 or whatever messy skirmishes happen, which happen all the time in League of Legends, this could come in a clutch and do you some good work. As for your secondary runes, you have two options mainly. Um, it's basically you either go Sudden Impact with Ravenous Hunter or you go Inspiration, which you will be running Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. I'm not exactly sure about Biscuits, like Magical Footwear and Biscuits for difficult matchups in top lane. I've never seen it, so I don't know if it's really that valuable. I do know that Cosmic Insight is quite valuable, and Free Boots are very valuable, even though they were nerfed recently because people were picking it a little too much. Personally, I enjoy Sudden Impact and Ravenous Hunter. There are several reasons for it. 
Uh, it's not just because of the extra damage that you get out of Sudden Impact, but really it's because Ravenous Hunter is a little overtuned in my opinion. I don't think this rune should be as strong as it is, and with the items that are currently the most overpowered in Jack on Jax, which I will be talking about in a minute, uh, those items that is, you won't be getting a lot of leeching on them. Uh, there's no actual lifesteal or anything on those items, which makes Ravenous Hunter that much more not just powerful, but crucial, actually, to make the build work. Of course, uh, if you are laning in top lane, the inspiration option with free boots is uh, even better than when you're jungling, and it's already viable as a jungler to run it. Um, because it's a little bit easier to get lifesteal and sustain from your items as a top laner than it is as a jungler. As for your other runes, uh, attack speed if you're jungling is a must. If you're top laning, you can go double adaptive force and then run, you know, whatever defense you need. Uh, but for the jungle, you don't run double adaptive force. You run attack speed for the clear speed and the DPS. And it's very, very good on top lane as well. So you don't have to run double adaptive force just because you're in the top lane. I would say for top lane, they're both equally strong options with very, very minor details. So uh, that should be your runes for Jax. There's not too much to discuss, you don't really have any other options with Conqueror and Triumph, but you do have other options with, you know, Alacrity and Coup de Grand Last Stand, and you also have other options with your secondary between... Uh, it's basically, it's between f whether you want free boots or you want the leech from Ravenous Hunter. Before we take a look at the items, uh, I want to talk about ability maxing on Jax. If you are in the top lane, you're probably just going to do full W max into Q. And that's also the most commonly seen for junglers, but uh, I don't do that. Uh, what I do is I do W, Q max alternating. So basically I'm splitting the points between W and Q, but always I'm slightly favoring W. So it's always W first and then the Q. And the reason I like to prioritize the points into my Q is because I cannot tell you how many times it has saved me in a clutch situation between dying or not dying and getting a kill or several kills. And the reason for that is because rather than maxing W 100% and then Q afterwards, what splitting the points does is it takes the cooldown lower on your Q. Your W cooldown doesn't actually get lower and your Q is your only gap close as Jax. You have no other way of getting to people. I mean, you can run at them and flash at them, that's really it. So the lower the cooldown of your Q, the more often you can use your gap close in the same fight, which is actually crucial as a jungler to be able to do that, because more often than not, you'll have to use the Q to gank as well. So there's going to be a lot of situations, a lot of really messy situations, where you are going to die if you do full W max, and you will really, really wish that you had that extra point in your Q so you didn't have to wait that one second longer that ended up killing you before you could dash to your opponent and kill them. Trust me, I know exactly what I'm talking about. It has happened to me so many times that the extra points into Q ended up saving me and getting me kills rather than killing me, and it is 100% worth it. The DPS you sacrifice by putting points into Q and not W is absolutely minimal. Okay, the Q itself deals damage too, and that damage increases with points as well. So you don't have to do do a straight W max. You can do W, Q alternating the way I do it, and it is, in my personal opinion, the superior way to do it. Now, to talk about the items, because I'm jungling, I start Hunter's Machete and Refillable. As you can see, I have starting items and consumables up top, very standard. As for the actual build, for junglers, you're going to want to get the Stalker's Blade and into your boots. You can run Red Smite if you want instead of Blue Smite. It is more of a dueling option, uh, whereas Blue Smite gives you better utility. Personally, I find that the utility is extremely nice, and also Red Smite is a bit of a bait in a lot of situations. I find that Red Smite makes you think you can duel everybody when you really can't. So. Uh, I like Blue Smite better personally. Moving on, your jungle item should always be a Blood Razor. Sometimes you will see weird Cinderhulk Jaxes in jungle, or sometimes you'll see it in pro play, or the occasional 
uh, solo queue player, it's never worth it. It's never as good as Blood Razor. You're never going to be able to do your job because you will just die and you won't have the impact that Jax needs to have. Jax is first and foremost a damaging champion, and he scales so freaking hard with attack speed, there's actually no reason not to get Blood Razor. As for your boots, you have two options, basically Ninja, Tabai, or Merc Treads. Personally, uh, like I said earlier, I really enjoy Merc Treads. I think the tenacity is ridiculously powerful in the current meta, and I tend to do a thing where I get armor as well before I start on my Triforce. As you can see, I have the rest of the build down here, and, you know, that is going to result in six items right there. The reason I get the Chain Vest earlier is because it's really just a question of personal preference, but if you're not running Ninja Tabai, you're going to find that you'll be taking a lot of physical damage from a lot of different sources, and Chain Vest actually builds into Guardian Angel, so what I like to do is I get my Blood Razor, I get my MR Boots, and then I get armor before I build into Triforce because it makes me a little more safe and it has saved me in many situations actually having that extra armor. You will get your Triforce slightly later though, so feel free to experiment with the Chain Vest and see if you like it. If you actually run Ninja Tabai, you can do other things where you build Ninja Tabai and then get like a Negatron Cloak before your Triforce or something like that, depending on what you want to build it into. Uh, Negatron Cloak is the magic resist item that builds into Wit's End, in case you're wondering. Personally, I don't actually build Wit's End on Jax, which is, you know, another reason why I don't do that. Now, with the rest of the items, Jax needs Triforce in order to function. That is his bread and butter item. You cannot skip this, no matter if you're top laning or jungling. If you are top laning, you'll be doing this exact same build, but you'll be skipping the jungle item, meaning your first item is actually the Triforce, and your second item is going to be the Spirit Shoujin. Now, the sad part about <laughs> playing Jax now is that there's not a lot of creativity in his build. He is an extremely powerful character, but uh, he doesn't really have a lot of choice because Spear of Shoujin and Sterox Gage are completely overpowered and busted items at the moment. I don't know if Riot have any intentions of nerfing them, but if they don't, uh, we're going to have to keep buying them on Jax because they are just by far the best options. I like to get the GA, like I mentioned earlier, from the Chain Vest. You can build that into a GA, and then I finish off with Sterox. I could mention certain details about how Gunblade is awesome on Jax and how Spirit Visage Gunblade is an awesome combination, or how Spirit Visage and GA is an awesome combination because Spirit Visage actually amplifies the revive from Guardian Angel. But in the end, none of those details matter nowadays because you just have to get Spirit Shojin and Sterox Gage every single game. You know, assuming that the game goes long enough, you just have to get those items because they are the best and nothing else comes close. So that's the reason why I run Ravenous Hunter on Jax, is because as a jungler, you don't actually get to build sustain, because Spear of Shojin is way too powerful, you just have to build into that. And the same thing can be said about Guardian Angel and Sterox Gage. In case anybody's wondering, the reason Spear of Shojin is so good on Jax is because the cooldown reduction allows him to spam his uh, E. So basically nobody can ever really hit him <laughs> in the late game once he actually has the item, provided that he is dealing damage, or rather auto-attacking the entire time. So it is an extremely ridiculously powerful item. If you are top laning, you have more options because you're not going to have the uh, Blood Racer item, so you're going to be building, you know, Trinity Force into whatever boots you want, Mercs or Ninja Tabai, and then you will have Spirit of Shoujin, and then after that you have the option of potentially getting some sort of sustain item such as Wit's End or Gunblade or Blade of the Ruined King, whichever one you like, and then you can sort of take it from there. Uh, usually you're still going to want GA and Starx Gage after that because they're just so strong in the late game. They're really just too strong in general, let's be honest. So that is in essence the Jax build. There's not too much creativity in it nowadays, which is a bit sad, but he is so much fun to play, and he is a very powerful champion. And uh, with this information, you should be uh, good to go. So thanks for watching, and have a good one.